Today's video is sponsored by Satori Reader, one of the only sponsors I've ever accepted on this channel because of how well I think it integrates with my own content. So I hope you can enjoy this conversation between me and the creator of Satori Reader, Brian Rack, as we try to simplify a grammar that seems to plague both of our students. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to use it in many different situations and start to sound even more natural in your spoken Japanese. And you'll also hopefully be able to understand it when it comes up in your own immersion activities. Let's get into it. Today, we have with us the creator of Satori Reader, Brian Rack. It's been a while since he's been on the channel. Welcome. Good to see you. Today, we are going to be talking about some grammar points that I feel like, in, in my case, a lot of my students either struggle with. You, do you get a lot of questions about this or is it something? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you know, we have a uh, question and answer section uh, at the bottom of every story on Satori mm. Reader. And so there are certain kinds of questions that just come up over and over again. Mm. And um, this is kind of a family of questions that we get a lot. And so um, I thought it would be fun. Almost everyone has encountered this pattern and almost everyone has wondered sometimes, what is it doing in this sentence? I thought I knew what it did, but it seems to be doing something else here. So I thought it'd be fun to take up a few of the main things that this pattern can do. What is that pattern that people ask about all the time? Yes, so that is the te kuru pattern, the te form of some verb plus some form of kuru. And it, this can actually do five different things. Um, actually, maybe more depending on how you count. And so I wanted to tackle three of those, uh, starting from the very literal and easy to understand and kind of progressing to a more figurative uh, sense and also provide some pointers for where you could go for um, more on the other two. Sounds good. Nice. And stick around to the end of the video where we're going to be doing a quiz where you can see if you've understood the three points that Brian's going to be going over in this video. We're going to go through three example sentences and we're all going to try and figure out which of the three usages of te kuru that it was. I know I use it almost constantly in my day-to-day -day life, and I don't even think about it anymore, but I do remember when I was learning it. It looks like it should be really simple, but then, like you said, there's some more figurative usages of it that, you know, will become natural with time, but I think for the uh, new learner is not so obvious. So I'm kind of excited right. to see what you're going to be presenting today. Sweet. All right. All right. So let's dive in. I like to start with the very simplest and most literal thing that it can mean, and that is simply to do something and then come, come back. Right. So, you know, the first thing, uh, one of the very first expressions we all learn when we start studying Japanese is ittekimasu, yes. right? Yep, yep. <laughs> Nobody notices, but something's built into that. Yes, yes. I'm, I will go and then I will come, yep, literally, yep. <laughs> is what you <laughs> <laughs> right? right. Um, but actually, that sort of uh, is the pattern that you can use with so many other verbs. Mm -hmm. And um, what it does is it creates the, uh, the sense that you're going to temporarily leave where you, wherever you are, perform mm -hmm. some mission, and right. then come back after right. not too long of a delay. Uh, of course, saying ittekimasu when you go to work or you go to school mm -hmm. is uh, is an example of that. But Right. It's, it's, it's such a common expression. You don't think about what it means ever. I bet you even a lot of Japanese people don't think about what it means. But then like when you break it down, it's so literal. It's just, it's just like, I'm going to go <laughs> and then I'm going to come back to this place. Imagine saying that in English when you're walking out the door. I'm going to go and come back. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think the, the Terminator had it, you know, when he said, yeah. I'll be back. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. the guru. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. But, um, yeah, well, when you use it with other verbs, the cool thing about it is you don't actually have to specify the going part. You just say mm. that you'll do something and then come, and it means that you're going to go and do that thing and then come back. Right. For example, okay. yeah, like, so if you were to uh, you run out of milk, and you wanted to go buy some at the at the convenience store. In English, we mm. say, I'm going to go and buy. Well, in Japanese, you say, you're going to buy and come. Mm. So that sentence would be, konbini de gyunyu wo katte kuru. I will buy some milk and come right, <laughs> at the convenience right. store. Well, it, it brings up an interesting point because I often get students who will literally translate their 
the way they'd say something in English into Japanese. And it always, call, like the first time you see it, you're like, yeah, that, that, that makes sense to me as a, right. a, an English native speaker. But then the Japanese person reading that is like, no, that's not right. Making that little shift into the way you would say something in Japanese to express the exactly. same idea is a is a difficult thing for new learners but um yeah but that's the big that's a big one the uh we would say i'm gonna go buy milk but we don't specify that we're gonna come back it, br right. <laughs> it brings up the uh the the com like the sort of meme of dad going out to buy cigarettes and then <laughs> i'm gonna go buy cigarettes and he never comes back <laughs> you could never pull that joke off in japanese because he right. Say, they could have. So now he's just lying. Yeah. Whereas in English, just, yeah. if he says, I'm going out, he didn't lie. He just never came back. <laughs> Technically work, speaking. Work yeah. <laughs> Technically yeah. Speaking. Right. yeah um, I think uh, what you were saying just now kind of resonated with um, something that I, I, I know you have said before I've seen in your videos, which is that um, rather than sort of trying to kind of make up grammar, you know, or mm -hmm. make up your own expressions, try to use what you already know to be a you know correct working functional japanese right and this is a great example of just a simple pattern that's just like i mean it's a unit that people use everywhere and so right. when you're going to go do something whether that's um you're going to go go and meet a friend you know so right. that could be like tomodachi to atte kuru mm -hmm. i'm going to meet and then come Right. Or, you know, I'm going to go borrow a chair from another table. Isu o karite kuru. Right. So, yeah, you just plug it into that framework and then you've got some really easy to understand Japanese. Another thing I, I noticed there is, um, so like, for example, you say you're going to go meet your friend. Atte kuru. Mm -hmm. uh, I think something that help, might help people think about when to use that instead of... Um, Ainiku or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, why oh, sure. would I say that otherwise? Mm -hmm. Like, of course you could say this, but like all things with language, it's very, very contextual. Like, who are you telling that you're going to go meet somebody? If it's yeah. the person who is like, you know, who you live with, what's yeah. important to them might be the fact that, I don't know, you're coming back. Like, I'm going to go and then I'm going to come back here. Maybe that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but no, it, it yeah. totally does. In fact, it, yeah. I was going to I was going to mention something just like that, actually, mm -hmm. because people ask me, like, why, for example, toire ni itte kuru. I'm going to mm -hmm. go to the bathroom and then come back. And right, people right. will say, why do you need to specify? <laughs> right. you're, like, isn't it obvious? You know, yeah. you're not going to be in there forever. But <laughs> I think, you know, what what the te kuru pattern contributes is this this sense of a round trip. You're telling the person that you're with, um, right. I'm going to pop out for just a second mm. or, you know, it doesn't have to be just a second. It could be, you know, a day or whatever, but I'm, I'm leaving, but I'll be back. There's right, a sort of right. round trip in there. And so, yeah, this, this, it, this just popped into my brain and let me know if this makes sense to you. I think it's kind of like building in the expression, be right back to yeah. whatever you're going to do. It's like BRB. I'm going to go to the toilet, BRB. It's just like building in those two phrases into one little convenient expression that gets it all. Totally. Yeah. Because actually, I mean, a lot of times, chotto, it comes right before that, right? Chotto itte kuru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chotto katte kuru, right? And it was that chotto really contributing a mm. little bit. I'm, it's going to be really quick. It's just a small thing. I'm just going <laughs> right. to go do this thing and then come back. Right, right. right? So you wanna, it really yeah, is. Absolutely. Very much like be right back. Let us know in the comments if that made sense. If you if, if that didn't make sense to you, let us know why, and yes. uh, we'll try to we'll try to get to you in the comments of and make it a little bit clear. If it didn't make sense, let us know in the comments if you got it. Okay, so the second thing that this pattern can um, do is when it's used with a verb of communication, like saying or asking or inviting, that verb plus kuru, it means that that communication is directed toward the speaker. So, for example, in, an, in a sentence like, Kare wa onamae wa nan desu ka? To kiite kita. Oh, 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 oh. It, it's uh, that person literally asked and came. They asked and came. Well, right. the coming is happening figuratively. They're coming by virtue of asking. It means the asking is directed toward the speaker. Mm -hmm. And so even though the word me doesn't appear in the sentence, what this really means is, he asked me 
what's your name came at me with a question or something like that. <laughs> yeah um, exactly maybe maybe less aggressive but yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> it's kicking through the wall <laughs> right not um, quite but <laughs> yeah but you can actually use this with any verb of communication so like for example if you wanted to say my phone uh, my my friend phoned me tomodachi ga denwa shite kita a friend phoned and came right they came by via phoning they right, phoned right. me yeah right. how, how would how would i say that i guess we just say that someone they asked me a question they asked yeah. me a question yeah i think in english you know we have this really um useful thing called a indirect object mm. right where you can say like i i mailed a letter and you can stick her like in the middle i mailed her a letter right, right. and that kind of it shows directionality but there isn't a indirect object in in japanese so there's these other kinds of of mechanisms to get that same information across tekuru is a little bit different because it, it only works in the direction of that person said to me or invited me or right, it always right. is always coming like this um but it's really useful um for for example uh let's say you're reading dialogue and have you ever been reading dialogue where there's like um more than two people let's say three people are having yes. a conversation right, and like yes. sometimes you're like wait a minute which who is the who one who is saying who, who? this right you can you can lose track a little bit sometimes yes. right yes. you have to go all the way back to the beginning and like <laughs> kind of read it carefully um mm. but this pattern can actually help you to orient yourself sometimes because if this story is being um told in the first person and there's one sort of you know person from whose point of view mm, mm, mm. everything's going on and then you have kite kita or itte kita or something like that right. then you automatically know that that person is the one who was experiencing some somebody saying to them somebody is asking them the question yeah yeah, yeah totally makes sense i think this is the kind of pattern that does show up a lot in writing. I mean mm. it certainly shows up in in normal you know spoken conversation too, but I think it you you see it a lot in stories, which is very applicable to satori reader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All about so you'll stories. Have, you'll have lots of opportunities to to see it in use. You're going to see it in a lot. Reader. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so far we've seen I'm going to do and come back. And right. so I like to call that the going on a mission uh Okay. Take <laughs> going on a mission. Got it. All right. And then there is the saying and coming or communicating right. and coming and so we can call this the uh communication directed toward the speaker mm -hmm. sense. Perfect. Okay, so we've got one more and uh we've been getting sort of more and more figurative as we go along. Mm. And um this last one is going to be the most figurative. And what it is for is for a change of state like getting tired or um it getting cold or hot or you're you're you know getting hungry something that can that takes time to happen so it's this gradual accumulation of change and after a while that change is said to come right to you and what that means when the change has come is that it has accumulated to a point where it is noticeable and you can now realize that right. that change has happened This so, is actually one of my favorite just to throw this in there. One of my favorite uh usages of teikuru. I don't know why. I just really I like this. I like it a reason. lot too. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. I I I didn't learn it separately actually. This is one of those ones that I sort of just got used to over time. Uh mm -hmm. so it's really hard for me to explain it because I didn't sort of break it down in my head. I just got used to it. Yeah. Um, so so I'm going to I'm I'm very interested to see Uh, okay. And, and already already um I think in your explanation at the beginning here I, it made it a little bit more clear in my head of to why it is the way it is. Um but I really like this one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I think this is uh this is a really fascinating one for so many reasons. First of all, it's sort of similar to English in that we we say that sometimes you can map it really nicely to an English translation like it it came to be a certain way. Mm, right, right. Right. Yeah. Um I like to imagine sort of like this set of train tracks. Mm. and where you're standing is now right. and something is off in the distance and it's coming toward you and this off this pattern is often used with the kind of change that happens almost imperceptibly to start like if you think about 
the process of getting tired, right? Mm -hmm. You're working when you're tired 1%, right? You, you don't know 5%, no, you right, know, right. At, at, there's a certain point. So, so it's the, the getting tired train is coming down these mm -hmm. tracks. And at, at first it's a long ways away and it's getting closer and closer. And at a certain point, enough change has accumulated that you can say the getting tired train has come. Mm. Like I have you gotten can perceive tired. It now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's tsukarete right. kita. Right. Tsukareru, the verb uh, to get tired. If you mm -hmm. combine that with kuru, you get tsukarete kuru, mm -hmm. which means to to gradually become, to come to be tired. Now, if we go back to that that train idea, the the getting tired train is coming. It's coming. It's coming. And when it has come, when you can say tsukarete kita, mm -hmm. then that's the point where you go, wow, gosh, I'm, <laughs> I've gotten tired. I didn't, maybe I didn't realize, but now I realize, like, I'm tired. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you can actually say it's karete kite iru. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which means that it hasn't come yet, but it's coming. It's <laughs> I, coming. I, I you can, can feel it. it. coming. I'm alive <laughs> right now. If we stop, I'm good, but <laughs> if I say that, and I'm sorry, that just came out naturally. I'm done. I'm yeah. tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. And I like to point out to people that when the train arrives, or like another example is, uh, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say it's May, it's starting to get warmer, right? right? And you start to notice, wow, okay, like it's gotten hot these days. I like to, uh, to point out that it doesn't necessarily mean that you've reached peak intensity. Right, of, right of whatever it is, hotness, tiredness, um, you know, head starting to hurt. Um, right. It just means that it's it's accumulated enough that it's now noticeable and discernible. Right, right. Yeah. That's a, it that's could very well point. continue to get hotter, you know, as the days go on. Right. But Yes, and that, that's a good point. This sort of process is uh, is become noticeable is a good way right. to think about it, right? You wouldn't say, kekkon shite kita. Um, or something like that. Like, eh, that's like a one time thing. It's right. cut and dry. Well, maybe. It's cut and dry. <laughs> cut and dry. At this point, I'm now married and, you know, something like that. Sometimes people ask about this pattern, like, but why even use it at all? Especially like with a verb like naru, which already mm. means become. What would the example, uh, what would the difference be between something like atsuku natta and atsuku natte kita? Ooh, that's a good question. And, you know, in a, in a certain way, uh, sense, there really isn't a difference because in either case, it's hot now. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. But right. with the tekuru pattern, there is a sense of this um, sort of a ramp up to that stage. Like right. it, it took place over time. Usually there, so there are times when it, when it can happen very quickly, but usually these, it's used with verbs like getting used to something, you know, getting hungry, something that takes time to accumulate. A nice example might be um, mm. So this is something that you might say after you've been doing your taxes for a while, for example. Oh. And, <laughs> right? Mm. If you just say, or right, your, your head is tired in that case too. But with it's kind of like you can feel that there was a progression. Like it started mm. at some point, it grew, and, and now it has kind of reached a critical mass. Right. So it sort of it sort of blends in the um, what made it happen almost like mm -hmm. sort of into the context. Tsukarete kita or tsukareta, or just my my head is tired. Atama ga tsukareta. It's just mm -hmm. like it's it's talking about right now. My head is yeah. it's just that's all that is included in that. My head is tired or I'm mm -hmm. literal translation of course, like mm -hmm. I'm tired. But that doesn't include like the why I'm tired or the whole the whole process of what made me tired whereas that tamagotsukarete kita. Yes. Sort of like including that the whole weight of that thing you've done that's made it happen. Um, right. so it's much more expressive. Yeah, it's the coming over time. Like you say, mm. if it's just tsukareta, that's sort of like binary. Like, right, I wasn't exactly, tired before, it. now I'm tired. You know? <laughs> right, right. Right. Well, yeah. tsukarete kita, we see this this prog progression toward uh, being tired. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then culminating in the feeling that you have now. <laughs> right, right. That's good. Yeah. 
Okay, so I call that use of tekuru the gradual accumulation of change. Okay. Okay, so we've got three uses here. They all look exactly the same. And so um, people naturally ask, well, how do you distinguish these? There's so many. I mean, there's two other ones we didn't even cover, you know? Right. Um, and what my answer is, is um, whenever you learn a new pattern, I always encourage people, put it to use as quickly as you can, um, both in your own production of Japanese and um, and try to spot it, you know, in the media that you're consuming, mm. whether that's anime, you know, or movies or TV or you're reading, um, because it's if you just learn it and you put it in the filing cabinet, you know, you're right. it's gonna fade over time. You want to immediately you use it, you lose it. <laughs> yeah, put it to use. So, on that uh, note, uh, I've picked uh, three examples of these three different patterns uh, right. from from real stories that you would encounter in Satori Reader. And so um, I thought we can put them up there on the screen and we'll talk through which one each one is. Sounds good. Let's do it. So we're going to put up the sentences on the screen and you try to guess or try to discern or try to break down which one you think it is. At the end, let us know how many you got right. Okay, so you're faced with this sentence, you're looking at that ending, kita, and you're trying to figure out which one it is. So how how would you attack this? How would I attack this? So we, we noticed here that it's a quote. Someone has said something. We've got the to particle that's marking mm -hmm. quotation, and then we've immediately got a word after that that means to ask. Yeah. So we're we immediately know here that we're dealing with communication. There's right. been a quote, and it's communication. So that, I mean, there's only one of these that has to do with communication. It's got to be the communication right. one, right? <laughs> yep. Ding, ding, ding. If you got it right, let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's the giveaway right, right there, the verb of communication. So Perfect. The, the old man asks me, or he asked right. me. Okay, Andy, so uh, based on what we've talked about, how would you break this one down? Okay, so we've got So we've got um, my eyes. We've got which is to get used to. Get used to kurumade. So until my eyes got used to something or came to be used to something. Okay, so the person is not going to do anything, right? And this isn't, naredu has nothing to do with a communication verb. It's, it's it's just a state of being, becoming used to something. So I think that sort of gives it away right now. The verb here is about becoming something, becoming used to something, not mm -hmm. going to do something and not communication. So it's got to be the second one which was the train tracks one. And what did you call that one again? Yeah, uh, that was the third one, I think, actually. Oh, but the third? yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, okay. It's the most, the most, uh, what you might call it, the most figurative one. Exactly, yes. yeah. The um, I like calling it the train tracks one, actually, but it's I like the that. accumulation of change, basically. Accumulation of change or train tracks one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, like the, I like those both. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, until I became, my eyes be got used to whatever it was that was happening, I w mm -hmm. nothing was visible. Nothing yes. was visible at all. And and again, you can see that the verb here, like you said, it's it's something that takes time and which happens gradually. So right. I th think of your eyes getting used to a dark room or you know going out into bright sunlight. Whoa! Like it takes a little bit and it happens mm. gradually. And so that's the perfect candidate for this use of tekuru. So I guess it's kind of a gimme on this last one because... <laughs> uh, you never know, maybe a trick question. <laughs> it could it could be, yeah. Sure. All right, so let's take a look at it. Okay, so um, what do you think about this one, Andy? All right, so we've got a じゃ well then, boku mi chiketto. So about ticket, katte kuru ne. So kao is just to buy. We just mm -hmm. talked about in the last one that processes are the train tracks one, but a single action that's sort of, you just do it and then it's done, like kao, would be the the very first one we covered, which is to do a thing and then come back. So katte kuru ne. So this person is clearly talking to someone that's 
in the room with them and they're saying, hey, I'm going to go buy this thing and then I'm going to come back here. So mm -hmm. it has to be the first one we covered. I'm going to go do this thing and then come back. So that, that exactly. verb being a, being a, a one-time deal, that thing you do and then it's finished and then you come back. First. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the going out on a mission thing. Yes, and, going out on a mission. <laughs> and if you were if you were reading this in context, it would be even more natural to understand that because it's about a couple who are on a date and they're standing um, near the, the ticket booth at a movie oh. theater. And so one of them says, okay, well, you wait here. I'm going to go buy the tickets and then I'll be right back. Uh, a lot of people ask, how can you tell the difference with many other grammar points as well? And half the time, I feel like the answer can almost be, you can kind of tell from context, like not even necessarily having to break down what it is. Like, you know that he's not going to go through some process of suddenly having a ticket uh, manifest in his hand. I mean, that would be great, but <laughs> yeah, it's very obvious, I think, in context, yeah. a lot of the time like this. I never really thought about it, but um, you have a good point there. If it's an instantaneously completing action, like buying or something, it's kind of hard to imagine a case where the gradual accumulation one could right right could make sense it's not always a hundred percent obvious mm -hmm. but it definitely gives a good hint the type of verb that's being used yeah and um yeah some of those hints are stronger than others when it's a verb of right. communication i mean you can be like 99 percent sure it's right, it's right. that one yeah. um, sometimes you know there are certainly times when you just have to sort of mentally try out both right. interpretations and see which one makes sense. Mm. And, you right. know, of course, that's something we do in our native language all the time, too. Sometimes course, there just are multiple ways to interpret something, and you have to sort of get in the, the mind of the speaker and say, which one do you, did they intend to use, you know? <laughs> right, right. I think another obvious one is it's not always verbs, of course. Like we've, well, I guess it sort of is, but when we say like, um, of mm -hmm. course, the verb there is naru, but when it's become an adjective, you're going to, like that's a super obvious one if you've got yeah. not not the uh, mm -hmm. but i guess that is a verb so it's always a verb but i uh, if it's a, becoming an adjective you can be certain yeah you know you're right there's like certain sort of um combinations that are that they, they just always go together right you know like right. not not the kuru, yeah that's pretty much guaranteed <laughs> right. to be to be that one yeah might as well be as expression on its own almost <laughs> yeah totally yeah. we cover all five of those uses and uh, we have literally dozens of examples and an entire lesson that just contains quiz sentences to test yourself after you've uh, after you've learned the five big uses in our nutshell grammar series in satori reader so that's actually it's a three-part series i'm really happy with that um with that series because this is a as i said it's been sort of a perennial question for people and so it's a place you can go to and and really um, dig in and get more details uh, if you want to dig deeper on this topic and there's also tons of stories where I'm sure all of these types of usages of Te Kudu show up, where you can get uh, lots of practice in context over on Satori Reader. Uh, you'll also notice that in some of the example sentences we used today, if you find them in the stories, there may be other parts of the sentence that you didn't understand in our video today. But a lot of them, if you click on new grammar and stuff, there's explanations for that as well. So Satori Reader does a great job of breaking down the new things and the difficult grammars that show up within each story. So even if you didn't understand everything we talked about today, there's still a lot you can learn there. So check that out. I believe they have a sale going on uh, right around now. Yes, we do. Uh, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. It's our biggest sale of the year, and so it's a great opportunity to jump in. Um, but no worries if, you, if you're a little late watching this video because the Tokini Andy uh, coupon code is available, and it is also a great discount. What makes uh, Satori Reader different is really what makes you know what you're doing different and that is that you're not this huge company trying to teach a hundred different languages you know and just give people stacks stacks of you know flashcards you're Shots focused <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> no you're good you're good <laughs> but you know you're focused on japanese and and that's um true of us too we are focused intently on teaching Japanese. It's it's the, the thing that we know how to do. 
and uh, it's our passion to share that with people. So, you know, for viewers who are uh, using uh, your videos and liking your approach, I think that you'll find that um, it's very complimentary to use uh, Satori Reader alongside the Tokini Andy lessons. I think we're similar companies with similar approaches to to a lot of things that we do. So I agree that if you if you like what you see here and you've been using it for a while, I think Satori Reader will be a good fit for many of you. You know, so much of when you're studying, I mean, I found for me when I was in Japan as a student, there was this magic of doing the grammar and figuring things out and then seeing it in use. You know, right, that, that right. sort of back and forth. Yeah. Um, it's it's so powerful, right? You learn mm -hmm. something one day or one afternoon or something, and then later on your way home, you're seeing it on signs or yes. you're hearing, you know. What is the and, name of that? There's a name for that. that uh, oh, the phenomenon. Yeah. I don't know. It never ends, though. Uh, but, yeah, I know. It's amazing. There's, there's just quick example. It still happens to me all the time. Um, I played a little bit of poker with some friends and Yuki, and she was losing chips slowly over time. And she said the, the expression that I'd never heard before, jirihin, which is <laughs> slowly like losing something, right? Yeah. And everyone was, I was like, I started using it a lot because I thought it was a fun expression. And people were like, oh my God, that's not a word that you should learn. I'm like, no, it's super fun. And they were joking about how I should make a video on my YouTube channel teaching jirihin. And all Just... these <laughs> visitors to Japan are going to be saying jirihin and people aren't going to understand what's going on. They're like, oh, it's so uncommon, blah, 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 blah. And then I was watching a new episode, a brand new episode of one of the most popular animes right now, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. And... Um, it, it showed up in the episode. Like a, a guy was fighting and he's like getting weaker and weaker. And he says, Jirihin in the thing. And I was like. <laughs> it never fails. It, yeah. <laughs> even Japanese people think it's not common. It's in, in the newest, most popular show on television totally. right now. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, to, to have that experience, you need to have that combination. You need to do the study and then you need to have a nice, you know, area of just putting that into practice, right. you know, where, where you can experience that magical moment of going, wow, wow, I, I just right. learned that. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so that's why uh, it's such a good combination to do like lessons with you and then something with like Satori Reader. It's an important balance, sort of. If you targeted learn some things, you you maybe you can notice them easier when you do experience somewhere else. But if all you do is targeted learning of things, I, I don't know. I don't know anyone who doesn't get bored with that eventually and sort of totally. burn out. So like mm -hmm. having that that uh, having a place to discover those things and sort of get that uh, oh I'm starting to get it or ooh I saw this thing I didn't know yesterday show up here. That, uh, totally. like you said, that burst of almost, ad not adrenaline, but of dopamine you get when um, mm -hmm. when you find those things is uh, super, super motivating. So I think it's having a place to actually discover and f discover the things that you've been learning uh, in real use is like fukaketsu, absolutely oh, yeah. necessary. Mm. Yeah, totally. It's this magic cycle because it works the other way too. When you're on the side where you're, like putting your stuff to use, you're also coming ac coming across patterns that you don't recognize. Mm. And then, you know, you come back over to the side where you're sort of focusing on grammar and right. you go, oh, wow, I've been wondering what this means. He's going right. to explain, <laughs> right. right? He's going to explain right. this pattern and I've seen it a hundred times, but I, I didn't understand it, right? So right. it's really this virtuous cycle. Mm. So, yes, you know? that's the word I was going to, I was just going to throw out there, virtuous cycle is exactly what it is. Yep, yeah. I agree. So check us both out. We're both <laughs> <Yeah>. on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the internet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, it's good talking to you, Brian. It has I been great. That. And uh, I hope a lot of people get some use out of it. Uh, not some use. I hope a lot of people get some value out of it, and I think that they will. I do, too. Right. So thank you very much for having me, and I Thank hope we can you. talk again soon. I hope so, too.